Hello, and welcome to my Corrupted Gauntlet Guide. Recently, Jagex made some big quality of life changes to the gauntlet, and it is a lot more viable to do now. In this guide, I'll be going over pretty much everything you could possibly need to know about the Corrupted Gauntlet, uh, but do be aware that this is not going to be a efficiency guide. If you're wanting to know how to get world record completions, this is not going to be the guide for you. I simply would like to give you all the info you need so you can consistently get completions. The only actual requirement to do the gauntlet is completion of the quest, Song of the Elves. To get to the Corrupted Gauntlet, you simply head to Priv Dennis, and there is a portal located on the map where I've marked it. Combat level-wise, there are no real requirements, however, it is a relatively difficult piece of content, and so the lower stats you are, especially if you're just learning, the more difficult of a time you're going to have, so I'd recommend a minimum of like 85 combat stats, as well as 70 prayer. The basic gist of the gauntlet is you spawn in with nothing at all, minus a few skilling tools, and you then have a set amount of time to create your own armor, weapons, food, and potions that you use to fight the final boss. Let's start by talking about the most basic thing in the gauntlet, that is crystal shards. Every time you kill a monster, and sometimes when you do skilling actions, you will receive crystal shards. These are used to make armor, make weapons, make potions, etc. Next, let's talk about making armor. In order to make armor, you need to find three different resources. Crystal Ore, Linum Tyranum, and Friend Bark. Now, in order to make a full set of Tier 1 armor, you need three of each of these resources. Conveniently enough, whenever you collect these resources, they will give you exactly three, and then deplete. Other than the three types of resources, you will also need 40 crystal shards per piece of armor you make. So in order to make the full tier 1 set, you need 3 of each resource and 120 crystal shards. Next, let's talk about weapons. There are three different types of weapons that you can make in the gauntlet. The crystal halberd, the crystal bow, and the crystal staff. Up until recently, the crystal staff was pretty bad, but Jagex gave it a very large buff, and they're now all roughly on tier with each other. To my understanding, the bow and halberd are still technically better, because both rigor and piety are better than augury. However, it's not a big enough difference to really worry about it. That being said, the way that you make a weapon is you start by making a basic weapon using a weapon frame. There will be monsters throughout the gauntlet, and when you kill them, they will have a chance of dropping a weapon frame. You take a weapon frame, plus an additional 20 crystal shards, and you make the most basic weapon. You can then upgrade that weapon to its second tier with an additional 60 crystal shards. And then to make it into its third tier, it's a bit more complicated. In order to upgrade the Halberd, you need a Crystal Spike, which is dropped by the Bear Demiboss. In order to upgrade the Staff, you need the Crystal Orb, which is dropped by the Dragon Demiboss. And to upgrade the Bow, you need the Bowstring, which is dropped by the Dark Beast Demiboss. There are three different Demibosses that can spawn, like I just mentioned, and they can only spawn in certain locations on the map. The demi-bosses will only spawn on the outer row of the gauntlet, and they will only spawn within 6 of the 12 highlighted areas, which is shown on the map right here. So those white highlighted areas, that's where the demi-bosses can spawn. Now as I mentioned before, due to the staff being buffed, all three weapons are viable. So in my opinion, you should use whatever the first two demi-bosses are you find. What I mean is, is if the first two demi-bosses you come across are the, uh, the bear and the dragon, then you should use the halberd and the staff. If you come across a dark beast and a dragon, then you should use the bow and the staff. So essentially, you want to make two tier 3 weapons as quickly as possible. All of that being said, I would like to mention if you're a beginner, like you've never done it before, I would recommend you start using just the bow and the staff. The halberd can be a little bit more difficult to use, uh, unless you're feeling up to the challenge. If you're a real beginner, I would say use the bow and the staff for now. And last but not least, you need to know how to get your food and potions. Located throughout the gauntlet, there will be fishing spots that you use your crystal harpoon to catch paddlefish. You can then cook those paddlefish at the furnace, well, I guess it'd be a range, 
in the center, and they heal 20 HP apiece. As far as potions go, you can create an empty vial with 10 crystal shards at the singing bowl. You can then fill the empty vial with water, either at the pump in the middle, or you can also fill it at an empty fishing spot throughout the gauntlet, which is usually the more efficient way. You then use a Grim Leaf on the water-filled vial. Now, Grim Leafs can be found either on the ground, or sometimes monsters will also drop them. Once you have a Grim Potion unfinished, you use your Pestle and Mortar on your Crystal Shards. This will grind 10 of them at a time. You use that Crystal Dust on the Grim Potion unfinished, and voila, you've got an Egneol Potion. Now, what these potions do is they restore your prayer, your run energy, and they act as a stamina potion. So they're kind of a jack of all trades. So now that you know what you're looking for, let's do a walkthrough of what a prep would look like, and let's talk about your basic strategy. So the basic idea is you're going to want to make a loop around your starting point to begin. While doing this, you're going to grab whatever resources you find, and most importantly, you want to get a weapon frame. This, of course, is because once you get to a demi-boss, you're going to need a weapon to kill it with. So, in this room, for example, I've got three fishing spots, so that's going to be a lot of food to start with. Now that I've collected the resources from this room, I'm going to continue making my loop. In this room, we've got two high-level monsters, which means that I will get a guaranteed weapon frame from the first one that I kill. Okay, we'll pick up our weapon frame and collect any other resources in the room. This one, you can see that we have mining and linum. So we'll go ahead and collect the ore. Now, once we've gotten our ore, we can go ahead and drop our pickaxe, of course, because we have no need for it anymore. I will then grab the linum from this. And he will continue on making our loop. This room has nothing but linum, unfortunately, so that's not useful. This room has friend roots, which we do need. That's fantastic. So we will chop the tree. And when we're done, we can drop our corrupted axe, as we have no need for it. This room also has a herb. We can go ahead and grab that. And the last room in our loop has another herb for us, which is great. Now, we don't need to kill these little monsters currently, as we already have a weapon frame. Now, once you get back to the starting room, what I like to do is cook any food that I have and immediately drop it. As I'm going to need to catch more food, so I want to have more inventory space for once I go back out. So I'll drop my food on the ground. Then I'm going to head over to the singing bowl... And I am going to make a tier 2 weapon. I like to make a tier 2 bow, personally. You can make a tier 2 staff as well, if you'd like. Um, and since I already have what I need, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, a full set of tier 1 armor. There we go. There's that done. Now, I've got 60 crystal shards here, which is the perfect amount to make my potions. So, I'll grab 3 vials. I will crush the rest of them. And then I can drop my Pestle and Mortar. No need for that anymore. I can then fill my Water Fill Vials. Put the herbs that I have in there. Finish the potions. And we are off to a fantastic start. Now that I've finished my loop, I'm going to want to make it to the outer wall. Now, the quickest way to get to the outer wall is to go the opposite direction of the boss. We've reached the outer wall, and as you can see, we do have a demi-boss straight away. So I'm going to go ahead and kill the dragon. So we're going to want to take the corrupted orb and the weapon frame that we got as a drop. And what we're going to do now is we're going to check the adjacent rooms to see if there is another demi-boss. There is not. So, what this means is now we need to continue looking for another demi-boss on the outer wall. Now, this room hap happens to contain more fish, which is exactly what I need, so that's fantastic. So, again, if you recall earlier, there is three rooms on each side uh, that can contain the demi-boss. 
So if you've checked all three rooms on the southern side, that means you know there's no more there, you have to check another wall. So like right now, I'm in the process of heading towards the eastern wall. That looks like I've got plenty of food now, so I'll go ahead and drop my harpoon. Uh, there is another Grim Root, which is what I need, so I can grab my my final potion here. So that's done as well. You can decant those, and then I like to sip the last dose. And it looks like we found our second demi-boss, and this one is a bear. So unfortunately, the bow that I made is going to go to waste. And that's going to happen sometimes, and it's okay. Because every demi-boss you kill has a guaranteed weapon frame. So, I've got a weapon frame to go with my staff here, and then I will also get a weapon frame to go with my halberd from the bear. So now that I've got everything I need, I'm going to use my teleport crystal to get back to the middle. I can go ahead and drop my bow, and I can make my tier 3 staff, my tier 3 halberd, I can drop my scepter, my extra shards, and I can pick up the food that I dropped, and I am about ready for the boss. So you're completely prepped, you're ready to go. It is time to take on the Hunlef. Now let's talk about the Hunlef's mechanics. The Crystalline Hunlef will attack with both magic and range. It will start by attacking with range, and it will attack you four times, and then change combat styles. Now Jagex has been very nice to us, and they have added an animation... So that way you can tell what is a range attack and what is a mage attack more easily. So when, once you start the fight, you'll get hit by four range attacks. It will then do an animation which is telling you, hey, I'm going to switch attack styles now. It will then do four magic attacks and it'll repeat back and forth like that. Occasionally, whilst it is using magic, it will use a different colored magic attack and it will turn off your prayer. Uh, it is a bright pink uh, fire wave looking kind of spell. If you see that coming towards you, get ready to turn your prayers back on. And the last mechanic the Hunlef has is the tornadoes that it spawns. The lower HP the Hunlef has, the more tornadoes it will spawn. These tornadoes will appear in multiple parts of the room and their goal is to chase you. They want to converge on your tile. And if you let them hit you, you will take a very large amount of damage. So when the tornadoes come out, you have to run away. Another boss mechanic that's important to know is that if you walk underneath it, it will stomp on you. Now it's not a guaranteed thing. Sometimes you can stay underneath it for like a tick and you won't get stomped on. But more times than not, you will. So a, a useful piece of advice that I have to not go underneath the boss is if you're using Runelight, use the NPC Indicators plugin. Now make sure you go to the settings and you turn on Highlight Tile instead of Hull. Hull is not helpful. Tile, instead, will show you exactly what game tiles the boss is taking up. So it's easier to tell where you can't walk. Now on top of all the different mechanics the boss itself has, probably the worst part of all is the floor. You will notice throughout the fight, chunks of the floor are going to light up. Now, when the floor lights up at first, it'll be a darker color. If you stand on those tiles at that point, they won't damage you. However, once those tiles turn to a lighter color, standing on them will damage you. So whenever those tiles are in effect, you need to not stand on them. Now as far as you damaging the boss, you might be asking yourself why you made two separate weapons. Well, that of course is because the boss uses protection prayers. The protection prayer that it starts with will be random. So of course start by using whatever it's not praying against. You then want to attack it six times. On the sixth attack, it will change protection prayers. So the last piece of advice that I'm going to give you before I do a live action kill is stuff that's going to increase your DPS. So for one, try to only eat food at opportune times. Now what I mean by that is, if possible, now I don't want to get you all killed, but if possible, you're going to want to let your health get kind of low whilst you're in the midst of attacking it normally. 
as soon as it calls in the tornadoes and you have to stop attacking the boss anyway, then eat your food. And just a quick disclaimer, the boss's max hit through the correct prayer is still a 13. So you don't want to let your health get below 13 no matter what. And again, these are methods that are going to increase your DPS. So if you're a beginner, you don't really have to worry about it anyway. The other thing that can help you is you can wooks walk the tornadoes if you're using a halberd. This is obviously really dangerous, and I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're experienced with Wooks walking at Vorkath. It's done the exact same way, so if you feel comfortable, give it a go, but it is possible to Wooks walk tornadoes if you're using a halberd. One final piece of advice I'd like to give you before I show you a live action kill is the positioning of the boss. Now I know this won't be relevant all the time, because sometimes you're just gonna barely squeak by with enough time, you'll barely make it in, and then this won't matter. In situations where you've got extra time to kill, you can stand outside of the boss room and wait for the boss to get to the right position. Now let me say this clearly. The safest place for the boss to be located for you is in the corner. If the boss is smack dab in the middle of the room, it's going to make running around from tornadoes and colored tiles all the more complicated because you have to work around the middle of the room because you can't walk underneath it. However, if you get the boss into the corner, you can then have the entire rest of the room available to you to run around and you don't have to worry about getting stomped on. So let me show you an example. Where it's standing right now is absolutely perfect. If I turn on NPC indicators, which I have turned off, if I have that turned on, as you can see, there is a perfect one tile path going all the way around the boss. So if you've got a little extra time where you can stand there and wait for the boss to walk uh, to the corner of the room, it is going to help you in some sticky situations. So just like I have it right here, this would be a perfect example of where you want the boss to be. Now I feel like a common question that I might get asked is, what if the boss is all the way in the corner to the point where there's no path to run around it? Well, the simple answer is, go in the other corner to lure it away. Luckily for you, the Hun Left's attack range is the size of the room minus one tile. So, if it's stuck in one corner and you go to the opposite, it will drag it exactly one tile away. So as you can see right there, it's stuck in the corner all the way. And you're like, oh no, now I can't run around it. Well, watch what happens when I go right here. Boom. Perfect. I just created that one tile pathway for myself. Well, at this point, I think I've given you every piece of information you could need to know, or at least I hope so. So at this point, it is time to show you a live action kill. I know a lot of people can learn a lot just by watching people kill the boss. They just learn from example. So I'm going to give a full unedited kill right now. Again, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is make sure you keep an eye on the boss. Now that there is a visual cue telling you when to change prayers, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Because if you think I could count to four before, oh my god, it, it was a lost cause, but... Now that you can see visually when it's going to change, make sure you make it a focal point to recognize every time it does that animation and always have the right prayer on.
And that is going to conclude my gauntlet guide. I do hope you found it useful and best of luck on your completions.